Hi, welcome to Bootstrap Algebra Lesson 7, Making Game Images. Um, you should have Wii Scheme open, and let's get to um, our algebra. And Lesson 7, Making Game Images. Got some materials. Um, also, open up um, your brainstorm your own game from lesson two. You may have that printed out, um, or you may have it in some other notebook. But um, this is your game design document. So go in and bring that up. Get that in front of you. Okay. So you've already learned about defining values, composing functions, and reading contract. So that's a lot of code that you're going to be able to understand. And um, we're going to actually look through some game code today um, and, and, and go ahead and get started on the game that, that we're going to build out um, to build your video game. So let's do that. Read through the game template. So let's find the game template. Blank game starter file or in Wii Scheme, see where it says Bootstrap Starter Files? You can say Game Template. Let's open that up. Move this over so you can see the whole thing without it wrapping. That's the you know that's what this does. It it, it actually doesn't cut off anything. But if you'll see over here, um, some of these longer function definitions, then. Um, the more we scoot over, the easier the wrapping becomes. And, and um, this kind of tells us the levels of, of um, parameters that go into these functions. And, and we'll cut them together in a, in a couple of minutes. But first, I want you to go through, read the, through this the game template, get, get a new game template up, um, and go through it line by line, talk with your partner about what you think each part of the, the code does. So go ahead and pause now and go through get get that game template up in the Wii scheme and talk with your partner about what you think each line does. Okay, good. Um, before you move on much from that, I want you to hit and I'm gonna hit the remix button. So I'll give you a chance in a second. I'm gonna do it first. So the remix button. That's all you have to do. And then um, now I have my own version of it. So instead of being the template, and I have a project name, and we'll call it, you can put your name in there. Um, and then, um, then it will be, every time we hit save, it'll save it so that um, we can uh, have it available for later. So. Let's go through a few things. What are some familiar things? And what are some unfamiliar things? So let's go through this game template. Well, we've seen comments before. So that's really good. So you've seen comments before, so you know that those don't um, uh, have any effect on the code and um, here's a little uh, thing you can you can use these comment symbols to make boxes and you'll still see people who decorate their code really nicely to, to give it um, little sections of code and and you know you don't have to you can you start with that as long as you start with that it's going to ignore the line right so you could have this kind of box and put a little title in it here is a title for this box and do like that. So you can make all kinds of elaborate code things. It's the way programmers can waste time while we're thinking about other things to do is make nice little things, but they, they, they made nice little sections here to tell us what's going on in different parts of the section. You haven't seen this. Um, you know that the, this is going to be a require function. Um, and actually this is going to, um, this is some of the bootstrap code that is behind this so that things that aren't defined here, like if we go down, 
you'll see we use a function called screen uh, called put image. So we don't know whether that's part of the built-in Wii scheme or that came from this loaded teach pack or library. So that's just that's what this is doing. This is loading some extra functions into the environment. You know about define, so these are all defines. We haven't seen bitmap URL, but we'll talk about that. You might notice that they use capital letters here. That doesn't have any significance, um, any change in the program, but um, it's what we call in programming a convention. So it's just something that we're going to all agree on. And sometimes you may have conventions in your um, your gaming group, or you may have conventions in your uh, work, or where how you know with other people that you're programming with. And one of them that's very very common um, in scheme type languages is we put something that we're not going to change for the the entire program into capital letters. So we'll call those a constant. So that's just something in the program we're going to use it. So, so um, the technical definition for the thing that goes after the define is the variable name, if you remember that. But we're going to use this term constant for one that we're going to define early in the program usually um, that is going to uh, be the same. So it's going to be constant for the entire game. And so we can remind ourselves and remind other readers uh, later in the game uh, that this was a constant. Um, we'll put it in all caps. And so you'll want to change my game. We may want to change title color. We'll see what that does. What we're going to work with today are the things from your game design document, which if you see these constant names match the things that are in your game design document. Background player, target danger. So you already have some idea of what you're going to do with those. And this is going to give um, some real definition to those. It's going to make these as real things in our game. And then this is something new called Screenshot. Um, and we will talk more about that later. Um, and then hopefully you notice this game is made up into sections. Um, right now, these are just templates, right? So you have we have a contract so we can see what's going on. We don't know what examples are, but you can guess from the name example what kind of thing it's going to be. But you can see this is just what we might call a stub definition. All it does is take in something called X to some to an update danger function and returns X. Same thing with update target. And this is what we're going to do the rest of the uh, course is to define all of these new functions. And that's going to actually give us the uh, behavior that we want in our game so that we can um, uh, update and uh, make our player move around, all of the things we want to do in our game. Um, so that's, this is, that's why it's called the game template. And um, this is the document that we're going to use to uh, actually make that happen. And today, we're going to focus in on just this part. So hopefully you saw those things as you walked through the game with your partner. What does screenshot return? So let's look at screenshot. And we don't have the contract for screenshot here, but we could either go to the documentation um, or make a guess. And it looks like this is going to put images on top of other images on top of our background. So I'm going to say that we can guess that it's going to be an image. And we're going to look at that later, so we'll, we'll be able to verify that. What happens when you press run? Go ahead, let's go ahead and do that. So it made a new window. Oops. Can move that right. It made a new window. And it looks like it has some game elements in it. And we can look and see where those came from. It's got a, well, we only see a background and a robot. We don't see this danger with a red triangle or a target. Uh, but we do see the player that they got that from uh, this robot.png. I'm going to close that window. 
So it runs the game, but the game doesn't do anything. So it um, yet. So it um, it was just a static image, but it must be different than the screenshot thing we're talking about. So let's see if screenshot works. Ah, so now we see once you run the game. So I think you have to run it first to get that loaded in. And now we see a robot, uh, the uh, danger triangle. Was it danger? Yep, danger triangle, target circle, and the background. And it put those at these different locations. So it indeed does make an image. And we know we could do things like, so screenshot was a constant, right? So it's just a variable. So we know we could do things like, let's make it smaller so it's easier to look at. Scale, 0 0.25. Let's take it down to a quarter. Screenshot. There. There's a little tiny screenshot we could make for like a thumbnail or something. All right. And bitmap URL, well, we think that it probably goes out to the internet based on the word URL. And um, that's probably something that comes from this teach pack. And it goes out to this URL. If you know how URLs work, we can actually copy that entire thing. We don't need the quotes. So we copy this JPG and this web address, open a new tab, hit paste. And it makes that and it shows the background. So it goes out and that's exactly what our web browser does is it goes out to this server represented by Bootstrap World, goes to this directory, and this file exists, and our browser knows how to um, get a get a, an image file, and so it shows it. Same thing, Bootstrap uh, or um, uh, Bitmap URL knows how to go out to that server, ask for that file. And it retrieves it, but we told it to put the, the results, which is a binary file called a JPEG, which is just an image format, puts that into this background. So when we typed in um, background, we haven't done that yet. Let's do background. It's going to be really big, so let's do scale uh, 0, 0 0.25 background it's just the background image it already had it had already gotten that when it ran this file it already got the um, uh, it already did this command so it already loaded this image into this background variable or constant and now I can access it anytime I want So let's talk just a little bit about finding your game images. Um, there is um, something that's written into the Constitution of the United States about copyright and how um, uh, we want to protect the work that people do when they do creative work. Um, but we also want society to be able to benefit from their creative work. Sometimes that means we might have to buy it. Sometimes that means we can use it, and in order to figure out if you can use it, um, the United States courts have come up with this test for people who uh, who are living and working in the United States about when it's fair to use something for free without getting a license from the um, the copyright holder. So if you're only losing a small portion of it, if uh, you're not really taking anything away from the um, creator, if um, you're you're doing something new, you're changing it so that really the thing is new, might be based on something old, but it's new. Um, you're getting a, a benefit that is not commercial, so you're not selling it. Um, you're you're getting some other benefit of it, like we are getting educational benefit. Or we want people to be able to, in the United States, to be able to critique, make satire, or provide uh, education. So if your work is used in that. And all together, that's what this image is supposed to be showing, that each of these uh, leaves is part of a balancing test. And on balance, 
um, it points to fair use. So, so if it's a small portion, if it uh, doesn't take away, you know, all these other things, then it's fair for us to use it. So um, you can rely on fair use um, to use somebody else's copyrighted work, or we can just find um, works that actually allow certain types of use to begin with. So that's the easiest way to do, um, the, definitely the easiest way to start. Um, and our... Uh, Lesson has some suggestions about the easiest way to search for that. So if we go to DuckDuckGo and go to Images, Transparent, search for an image. So let's say we want a rocket. And images. Transparent. All right. And See if we can have, I want like clip art. So this kind of rocket is definitely a, a little easier to use. And let's see, do they give us any other advice on a license? I know on Google Images um, we can choose a license type. So let's see if we can do that here. Other settings. Privacy. No. I don't see that. So we could look at the license um, uh, that we, you know, we could look. Let's see if we can find something with some license information. Let's see what Clip Art Panda has for us. Doesn't talk about the license. So you can go and look uh, at the license for any of these, or I'm going to do what I normally do, which is images.google.com, rocket. And then we can do the same thing with um, So we can click on clip art and then under settings, advanced search, I can actually specify Creative Commons licenses. And then I can find, I'll get a license details uh, by my, oh, I want a, I want a uh, transparent. And if you find an image that's not transparent, you'll see why transparent is pretty uh, good. Oops. You can look at the license details. The, all right, so in this one, the people who put it up there say that it is in the public domain, which means that um, it's available for anybody to use. So um, you, can, you can read the license, and, and that helps with... Um, determining uh, e even if um, 
uh, we have a hard time finding the license, you can use um, that information to help determine where we are in fair use. Since we're not selling our game, since it's for educational purposes, most of the things in those leaves apply to us. And um, we can uh, be confident that we're going to be engaged in fair use. But as you go out through your gaming game design career, um, that's something you want to uh, pay attention to because you want to get paid for your game and we want other creators to get paid for their games. So I'm going to right click, choose um, copy link address, and I'm going to use this. Um, bitmap slash URL, double quote, paste. So that should be my address. Um, I don't think it actually got the right one. I wanted to right click and choose copy image address. Bitmap URL, double quote, paste, there. And it loaded it. It is huge mongus, but we know how to handle that. We can scale uh, 0 0.1 bitmap slash URL. Don't quote. All right, let's try that. All right, that's a much better. And uh, remember, you can use, so let's say that I'm going to make define my dash rocket as paste that whole thing all right my dash rocket okay and remember you can if i want to rotate it i can say rotate uh i always forget which is which but it's so easy to to um experiment i'm just going to say 90 i don't know whether that's going to make it pointing up or down i want to point it up uh, my rocket and it is so if i wanted to say um, i could define up as copy this so you actually can do image manipulation inside your program you know how to do a few things like rotate and um, uh, Uh, scale up and down. Um, you may be able to, to figure out some other things by looking at the documentation. Um, but you can actually use your programming language and your programming knowledge to do image manipulation right here if you want to. And you can always right click, say view image. It's going to say, do I want to leave the page? Yeah, let's leave. And now I have a URL um, with this image. I can do save image as. So I want to save it to my uh, uh, hard drive. Uh, I can copy the location for uh, briefly uh, for a short time in order to save it to Google Drive. Um, so I can can do all kinds of things with it. Um, well, you notice since I navigated away, um, I lost that screen. But because I did the remix, I actually have my game right there. Now you notice the interactions area resets. And in fact, let's type in screenshot. It doesn't know what that is because I haven't run this file yet. So I have to run that first. We get the game that doesn't move. Close that. But now, now the interactions area understands all of the code that was over here. So this code gets executed and now I can interact with it. So now you can, if you haven't found images yet for your game, get those images, save them to Google Drive. Uh, we can use bitmap URL to get them in. And so once they're on Google Drive, you can find the URL for your image. And um, if you've manipulated it, if you've made it smaller or bigger or whatever, and you can actually save that and put it into your game, where do you save it? Well, in your version of the game, the perfect place to save it is as this constant. So when you get your new background, paste its image right in there. You can test it to see if it works by 
just executing that code and then typing in background. Did you get it? Yep. So that's how you can test that you actually um, have the correct URL here for your background is because you change this one and make it into the, the, the URL that points to your background and um, then you have it. I want to point out one thing here. We call this kind of programmer art. Um, sometimes, um, you know, if you're programming, you, you may not want to take the time to go out right now and go get some, get, um, some images. So you just put something in. So in this one, um, they're just defining the danger as an image that is a solid red triangle. So, um, and then we can come back later and um, redefine the danger to some uh, other danger, like in Ninja Cat, it's the dog. So you can redefine that. But yeah, a lot of times we'll call this programmer art, where we just make a simple shape um, to stand as a placeholder. We can move it around the screen and do all of the things that we do with other images. Um, it's just that we didn't put the time in. And in big games, you probably learned from your research. In big games, um, you may have a whole uh, team or department that does the art. So you put in programmer art. The programmer does programmer stuff, like you know, figure out how uh, images move around the screen and how they interact with each other. And then somebody else in the game design team will put in the um, art assets, they're called, later. So you should have already saved your game. And what we looked at what, you know, you know how to manipulate images. So if you don't find the perfect image, then you can change it and then save that new image to your Google Drive to, um, to use inside your game. These are actually some some videos about um, uh, manipulating images, um, but they it, those aren't linked in our um, sorry those aren't linked in in our um, uh, normal lesson file. So um, if you need to open up the um, the lesson slides. To be able to find these videos, that's fine. You can also just, um, you know, search based on what you see here about how to um, uh, make an image transparent or get a transparent image and why that's important, how to save stuff to Google Drive, um, any of those image kinds of things. So, what's your homework? Your homework is to get some images from your, you know, that you talk about in your game design document, save those to your Google Drive. Make sure you can use a bitmap URL to bring those into your programming environment, just like I did, so you can go back and watch if you need um, more examples of that. Define images as values. All that means is you actually use them here. So, you know, make this point to your image. Make this uh, a bitmap URL that points to your image. for all of these danger background target player and uh, make sure it looks exactly how you want it to take your screenshot so here's something they've given us remember after your game runs all this is available so after the you make any changes you want to like say I want to make this a bigger triangle and I want to make it purple it's probably not going to show up well in the dark background. Let's make it yellow. All right, so this is just a new image that you know I, I loaded out there. And then uh, when I save, let's double check that nothing changes. Let's do um, danger. See, it's still red, right? Because um, I haven't run this. So I have to run it. I can close the game. But now when I do danger, it's that. So now... Let's do screenshot, and there's my yellow, and we can manipulate this um, screenshot just like, um, so, so we can see, look, it puts an image, it looks like it builds it up from the bottom with the last thing, so the background, the player, so let's move our danger, let's see, let's say we want to move it very far to the right, we know that this is 640 over here, this says it's 150. 200 
So let's move it way over here. How about 500? Let's change this to or 550. And then I've got to run. Then I'm going to do screenshot again. Can I do up arrow? Yes, up arrow. Alt up arrow. And now, oh, I drove him almost off the screen. Let's put him back at just 500. Run. Alt up arrow. There he is. So that's how this screenshot um, thing works. It just takes a bunch of images and lays them on top of each other. So we um, put the image of the player on top of the background at that location. We put the image of the target on top of the other image that we just made. And then we put the image of the danger on top of the other images that we made. So we're composing these functions. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And it looks like screenshot just takes that output and puts it to the screen. So play around with your screenshot. Make sure you get everything exactly the way you want it. And um, that is what you want for next time. And then um, you can, um, once you get your screenshot the way you want it, you can take a literal screenshot or you can take a picture of it uh, with your phone um, so that you can um, uh, keep that uh, as an example of the way you had it. And uh, don't forget to save. It's going to save every time you run anyway, um, but uh, it never hurts to hit the save button if you got a save button.